Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is the best MEDC, and it has been a very long time since I've done a video like this. I have been doing a lot of the in-person, like best EDC from REI, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, but that idea originally started with me trying to do a budget, like stay within a budget and get the best gear that I could for that budget off Amazon. So that's what this video is. I don't think I ever did a $200 budget. I think I've done 50, 100, and 250, I think. So this one was $200. So with that said, this is the best $200 carry that I could put together from stuff on Amazon. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So here we are with the two packages from Amazon, and I, just to be totally transparent, I did already have this. I ended up purchasing it, but canceling the order for the pen because one, I already had it, and two, it wasn't gonna arrive with all the rest of the stuff. So I decided I already have one, I don't need a second one. So uh, the pen's not in the boxes, but we will talk about it when we get to it. But uh, I don't know what is in what package, so let's just start with this soft one. We don't need a knife for this one. Amazon's keen on our package opening fetishes, so they've started using these easy open things. How annoying. We have a couple of things in this one, a few. Uh, so we have a little bottle opener, and not a bottle opener, a <laughs> utility knife. This is the wallet, multi-tool, and the key organizer. So let's start with these two things, the keys. We'll get those out of the way. So a lot of you know that my keys I keep them on this little itty bitty shackle. This was a true utility product, but it's discontinued. And some of you get upset because I talk about it all the time and you can't actually purchase it. Uh, sorry, but that's just <laughs> the way it is. I'm thinking about trying to make my own. There are a lot of shackles out there, but uh, none of them really kind of stack up to this one. It's simple and effective and affordable. So maybe I'll try my hand at uh, recreating it. But I was surprised to find this in my research. This is a Keyspark Mini and it's kind of the same concept, but it is a little different, right? It's not a metal shackle, it is a different material. So inside the packaging, you get some washers and the shackle itself. That's all there is to it, and uh, it's expandable. That's what it says, expandable, universal, slim. That's really all it says, but it is this rubber material. I thought it was leather, but it's actually rubber. And it's the same concept, right? You can just put your keys on it. Who knows, maybe I'll like this key smart more than the, the true utility. Unlikely, but possible. All right, so I had two metal washers in mine. I'll just keep that in mind. And all of you like, hey, cover your keys up. People can duplicate your locks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm moving, so it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> we won't have these keys much longer. Uh, I don't tend to put many washers on because I like, it, it adds too much bulk and in my opinion has made that uh, it makes it, it gives it too much friction. So I tend to only put washers on the outside and then I sandwich my keys in the middle. Another washer with this one. It is a nesting Chicago screw and I don't know if my little screwdriver is gonna work in that. Let's find out. Uh, barely it looks like it's gonna fit. All right, I actually kind of like that. Very similar in function to this true utility shackle, very similar in size. The question for me is does it fit on here? And it does. Dang, that's a really good alternative, I think, to the, uh, the true utility. Keysmart Mini. What was the price on that? $14.99, so $15 for a little rubber shackle. Um, I think these were like, $8, $9, and they came with a bunch of clips, like spring gate clips, but hey, that's not too bad. And it, it operates a little better because the problem I always have with this is that it, it bends in and your keys get pinched when you, when you spread them out, but that's not happening with this. You've got a little more flexibility there. I like that. That is a win in my book, the Key Smart Mini. Vote of approval, for sure. The other item I had here for the keys is this. I've talked about this before. This is the screw pop. This is a utility knife that gets, you can put it on your keys. Can't force it. Nope, not going on here. That's a bummer, but you could put it on something like this right here. Right, and then 
you can put this whole thing on. But it's just a really easy, lightweight way to put a utility knife on your keys. Screw pop. And it does have a magnetic retention, so blade doesn't rattle unless it's deployed. It does have a little bit of a fidget factor as well because of that. But very simple function, pull this arm back, slide this forward. If you use one of the four slotted utility knife blades, you can choose your length that it deploys. I think most people will probably go full length, my guess. But if you really only just need to nick open or cut tape and don't want to dig too deep, I do like that you can choose or select the depth, but very simple item here, the screw pop. I've got a few of these now, $10, and I think they are really, really great for the money, honestly. Really great little pocket utility knife, or keychain utility knife, really. Next, let's talk about this, because I had not ever heard of this before, and I really wanted to do something different with the wallet this time. Every time I do one of these, I always end up with like one of those cheap Amazon wallets, like the Travel Lambo or uh, the Magpul DACA or something similar to that. Uh, I wanted something a little bit different. So this time I went with the Aulet and there were a lot of different versions of this, but it was not cheap. I will say that the wallet was one of the most expensive things I got. This was $39, but there were a ton of different versions of this wallet. So this is the Aulet Sport Wallet. There was a minimalist, there was a vertical bifold. There were tons of different versions of this one. But one of the reasons I chose this is for this little pocket here. And I don't think this is gonna fit. I have to test this just because, yeah, see, that's not gonna fit. I wonder, hang on one second. All right, so I've got this little pocket right here and this company, Aulet, sells a pen that fits inside there. I wanted to see if this I think this is a key smart or some sort of pin. I don't remember. It's from a micro EDC video. That's not gonna fit. Fisher space pin, not gonna fit. And I'm sure none of these are gonna fit. That's a bummer. You'd have to get one of their special pins. I think their pin was like $15, but that's what that little slot's for. But what you could put in there, one of those small titanium toothpicks, which does seem like it's gonna fit in there. Tight squeeze but it does fit, so that's nice. You could put something like that in there. So that is a titanium toothpick there, and then you could use this side for like these little heavy duty needles that I was talking about, a SIM removal tool, things of that nature. So you can cram a little more in here than just, uh, just your stuff, but you do have a cash pocket in the back here, and then let me get some cards out. Made in California too. So let's put, it's really nice that they've stopped putting the numbers on the front of cards. Really, really nice. So we can put some of these here. So we have three cards on this side and this is uh, like five cards on the other. So a total of eight cards and then we could still put cash unfolded in the pocket back here. Honestly, I kind of like that. That's really nice. A little bit of gear stored in here. That holds eight cards very comfortably with bills and it's very slim still. I had never heard of this before, all it, but that is really neat. There are a bunch of different versions. So this is just the sport wallet, but this one is obviously horizontal bifold. They've got a vertical bifold. They've got one more passport size. They have a lot of different versions of it. And uh, it comes in this, I'm not sure, some sort of nylon. It is RFID blocking and it says 10 plus cards. I like that a lot. $39 is not outrageous for a wallet. This is not a cheap wallet, but dang, I like that. See how it feels in the pocket? Very slim. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Aulet. I'll say it right now. That's cool. Big win on that one. And the last thing from the first box is something I've already talked about on this channel before. This is the Gerber Armbar Drive. Now, I wanted something uh, to basically compete with the SOG Power Pint, not in the pliers area, but in what I often use it for, uh, being uh, having scissors and having uh, a, a, a decent screwdriver, like interchangeable bit screwdriver. And that's really the main thing here. This does have a blade, and I could have just used this as the main blade, but I, I didn't. So we have a screwdriver and all scissors, pry bar, bottle opener, and the blade. Let me show you those. We have full-size locking blade, which is, uh, I don't know what blade still, who knows? It's Gerber, so it's probably gonna be like 8CR or something 
to that degree. The screwdriver has uh, comes with a, a double-sided bit with a Phillips and a flathead, but you could obviously put just about anything in there. Any quarter-inch bit would work in this, and then you have a decent pair of scissors, a really decent pair of scissors, actually. They're a little fiddly to get open, but honestly, very big cutting edge with those, and uh, I think they work pretty well in my experience. And then the awl right here. And then finally, the pry bar bottle opener is on the very end here. This little part uh, just pops down and works as both pry and bottle opener. And honestly, the way it's designed, it almost looks like it could be like a pommel for just hammering on small things. But honestly, the Gerber armbar is not a bad tool. This is the armbar drive. Drive meaning it has the driver built in. I think it's a solid tool for the money. Uh, this was $35. Now, the SOG power pipe would have only been $50, but I felt like just how the, the, the finances were going in this, the, the money was disappearing quickly. I needed to make sure that I could afford a really good knife and the wallet was not cheap. So to make it all work, I went Gerber armbar. And uh, I do think that it was a, a good decision. I don't see them often, but I, I think it's underrated to a degree. All right, since it's already out, uh, let's talk about the pen. This is the right in the rain click pin. This is basically a Fisher space pin click, but right in the rain, they, they co-brand these sometimes. And this one is the green version. So inside you actually do get a Fisher space pin refill, but it says right in the rain. Uh, but it's the exact same as a Fisher space pin, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure it, it's the exact same thing. But I, I've had a few of these. I think they're really good pens for the money. I think they're like 16, 17 dollars approximately. And uh, just really solid. I would prefer to have like a fine tip in this. I, that's one of the reasons I don't really love the Fisher Space Pins is the medium tip. It's just kind of splotchy when I write with it, but uh, uh, an all weather, all condition pin. I think this is really cool. And of course I like it because it comes in green. This isn't something I usually typically carry, but I typically keep one of these in my truck or I had this in my uh, Super 73. I keep them around, even though I don't typically carry one of these pins. I think they're good for the money and good to have around, but I don't usually have one of these in my pocket. And that means that there are three items left in this box. We have the knife, we have the flashlight, and we have the watch. Um, I considered not including a watch this time, but I had this green theme going and I don't know, it just kind of hit me this idea and I, I wanted to see it through. So we have a watch in this carry. So inside you're gonna see immediately that we have a Casio. You guys might be a little bit surprised by this one. And then two items that are gonna be no surprise whatsoever. Let's start with the flashlight. I've talked about these for a long time. I think they are really good for the money. I think they are good flashlights in general. They are stupid bright for their size. And that does come with some downsides, right? With, with these flashlights, 650 lumens in something this small is outrageous. That is a lot of output. So what happens is that you don't get a lot of runtime out of them. That's just the nature of the game. They are very bright, but that burns through these tiny little batteries very quickly. And on the other end of that, these batteries are not replaceable. So that is a fixed battery. It is rechargeable, USB rechargeable, but that's a fixed battery. So this will have a limited life span, if you will. But I think for, I think this was 20 bucks. Yeah, 1995. I'm not upset if this breaks on me. I'm not upset if it stops charging. I mean, obviously within time, right? If I get some use out of it, I'm happy with it. But if it stops working within a week or two, obviously that's a problem or even a month or two, that's a problem. But in my experience, I've been able to carry these flashlights uh, for months and not have any issues. Um, and I would expect that they would continue to work for years. Can't say that I've carried any one flashlight for over a year. I tend to rotate a lot, but the Rovivon Auroras are great. And they do, I meant to get it out, put it right back in here. It comes with a split ring, but it also comes with a clip that can be installed in either direction. And then your USB recharging happens right here. There's a little plug and it is a micro USB charger. And since we have this here, this there are two different LEDs that you can get in this, either the Cree XP G3 or uh, Nichia 219C. I don't even know which one this one is. I bought it in such a hurry, I didn't pay attention. I obviously, I prefer the Nichia, but this doesn't say at all which one it is. 
That's cool. <laughs> That's helpful. Um, rechargeable 260 to 330 milliamp hour battery. So it's odd that they have a range there. Maybe that's a different size battery based on the emitter. I don't know. Fully charged in 70 minutes, two-way pocket clip, IC, IP65 weather resistance. Very, very bright, um, incredibly bright even. I can tell now that this is a little more cool. So I would say that this is the Cree and not the Nachia, but just really great. And they have fixed one of my biggest complaints that I had with, with the Rovivon flashlights originally, which was the interface. I'm not a huge fan of it now because you have to double click to turn it on and then click to go through your modes and long press to turn off. But there's now a quick way to get to turbo, which is just hold the button. Now I do wish it were just click on, click off, but it's not, which kind of sucks. But double click on and click to rotate through. Uh, I'm just so used to clicking on and holding to rotate your modes. Uh, it's just basically the opposite of that. So it does bother me sometimes, but I still think for the money, these Rovivon flashlights are incredible and there are so many of them. They've got them in titanium and brass. They have them with UV side lights, red side lights. There's so many different versions of these Rovivons now, the Aurora specifically. Um, yeah, so you can get the one that suits your needs, the color that you like, the material that you like. There are so many of them. And uh, yeah, I think they've refined this pretty well over the years. I was probably the first person on YouTube to really talk about Rovivon and to see how far they've come is really awesome. So Rovivon Aurora, happy to include it in this carry. So the last two items are the knife and the watch. Uh, let's start with the watch because I think this one's going to be more of a surprise. Maybe not, but it was something that I really wanted uh, to include. So I, I noticed that I was getting kind of a, a green carry going here and uh, kind of wanted to stick with that. So I, all I did was search green watch on Amazon. And this was one of the first results and I had to do it, had to buy it. This was a classic. I had one of these as a kid in black, just the real true classic, but the Casio data bank or calculator watch as everybody calls it. I think it's just a classic. It looks cool. It's very, very uh, retro. And for 20 bucks, it was hard to beat, hard to say no to. Plus they had it in green. Like how could I possibly say no? So let's get this on the wrist and just see how it looks. The old, the old data bank. I've not worn one of these. It's a little too tight. I've not worn one of these since high school. I think that's when I had mine. They weren't as cool or trendy back then. Everything retro is cool now, but this was not as cool back when I was in high school in the early 2000s. Man, I actually really like that a lot. It's very lightweight. I'm used to like a heavier watch. This thing is very heavy, but I think it looks great for 20 bucks. I am never going to complain about that. Plus calculator on your wrist. That's super handy today, you know, with all the calculators on our phones and stuff. <laughs> Regardless, I think that's really cool. 20 bucks. I'm not mad. The knife, uh, I don't think anybody's surprised with seeing this brand in this video, but I think there's a lot of competition in this price range, right? I mean, $50 two, three years ago, when I think when I did the last one of these 50 bucks on Amazon, would get you like a Spyderco Tenacious. Um, and obviously there are other knives that you can get in that, that price range, but Civivi has absolutely flooded the, the $50 price range on Amazon. And, and they're not the only ones, right? There, you, you could get a ridiculously good knife for $30 on Amazon too, with CJRB, Honey Badger. There's no shortage of options. Steel Wheel, there's so many, but uh, I think the best bang for your buck goes to Civivi. Uh, say what you will about different brands and Chinese made knives. It's hard to argue that Civivi is not making some of the best bang for buck knives on the market, period. They pop up in so many best knives under 50 lists. Uh, they, they just absolutely crushed that market and it's a race to the bottom. There are so many companies competing in that space now. And uh, man, three years ago, you would be really lucky to find a knife this good at $50. And now this is just a dime a dozen. So uh, maybe it's time for me to update the best under 50, but then again, like it just, how do you, how do you choose one when there are so many knives in that, that price range now? I mean, it's hundreds, hundreds of knives and they are all really good. I mean, they've got great lockup, great action, thanks to bearings and liner locks and flipper tabs. Uh, it's really now just 
choose the, the design you like and you know, you're gonna find something that is gonna hold up and, and do well. So this is a flipper on bearings with a D2 blade, drop point, deep carry clip that is reversible. Um, steel liners, I like that brass color. I just think, I don't know, it's, it's really hard to pick one or even a finite number of knives that are gonna make a list under 50, but this one just jumped out at me. Um, I could have gone Elementum, but that would have been too obvious, and I could have gone, uh, you know, forgone the, the watch and gotten, you know, a Nitro V blade from Civivi. Uh, I almost actually went with the Baby Banter. It's also in green and has a Nitro V blade around the same price point, but ultimately I wanted something a little bit bigger and really glad I went with this. I'd not had my hands on the Praxis before, but I think it's a really, really nice blade for that price. So there you go, that is the knife. And let's take a look at the carry as a whole. Uh, so the knife is the Civivi Praxis. That was 4250. We have the data bank from Casio, the old calculator watch. The pin that I went with was a green right in the rain. And then we also went with a Rovivon Aurora A1 for the flashlight. You have a Gerber armbar drive, as well as the Aulet, which was uh, kind of new to me. Never heard of them before this. And we also got uh, KeySmart Mini, which I didn't know existed, but really happy to learn about that. And then the Screw Pop, which I've had many of over the years, but there you have it. That is a $200 carry. I would not be upset about carrying any of this stuff. I think this suits my needs. It would suit my needs very well. And it's very similar to my personal everyday carry. And I really like that I got it themed. I think this turned out better than expected, but it did take a long time. Uh, the, coming up with this stuff, it took almost three hours of just sitting there and searching and browsing and looking for stuff, not even just looking for green, just looking to find the best bang for your buck and coming up with the right stuff for $200. That was actually pretty challenging, but I think it turned out way better than expected. That's it guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, in the comments down below, let me know what you thought about the complete carry I did, but also let me know what you wouldn't do or what you would do differently. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna do more of these, obviously. It's been a long time since I did one like this, but I think I'd like to revisit the $50 and $100. This one was a little bit eye-opening because it was a little more difficult to put together than I thought it would be, but it was still a lot of fun. So I'm gonna do them again as I continue to do more of the complete carry series. But thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Everything you saw in this video will be linked down below. Those are affiliate links. They'll help support what I do here. If you click and purchase anything using those links, also you can support by going to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC. But that's all for now. Thanks again. And until next time, carry on.